Wow, good evening everyone. We are delighted to be back this Saturday. And the Lord is great and is gracious and merciful. And it's a delight to be with you once more. Welcome to the Vessels of Light show. My name is Gideon Mwalili Mude, and I'll be the host for today. We are still on matters leadership and hopefully we will crown this today. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 2 verse 7 that the lips of a priest should hold instruction and wisdom. And that's, I believe, where we as Christians should get our wisdom, understanding, and direction from. And we are delighted today to have a guest who sits in that capacity. But before I introduce our guest to us, I would like us to open with a word of prayer, and then we take off. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this time and for this show. And as we engage in matters leadership, Lord, we pray that your wisdom will be supreme and we will gain understanding and direction also from what we will speak on today. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, now our guest is... Um, according to me, I regard him as an authority in matters leadership, and he is one of the best, if not the best, because we've interacted with his books and his teachings on leadership. And I think he will crown this uh, topic for us today. Uh, he is the lead minister of this church, Gospel Celebration Church, Kayole, and he is a delight to us. We regard him as a father in this ministry. And he is also designated as an apostle of Jesus Christ to this ministry and to this region. Now, our visitor, our guest, rather, is Apostle Patrick Muredi Nyaga. I know I may not see you applaud and applause him as he is with us, but kindly you can comment there and... Uh, yeah, let's engage. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Well, thank you so much, Gideon. You have just live under the Dana <laughs> yeah, Thank you so much. And, uh, it's a blessing to be here. Yes. I don't know what I'm supposed to say, maybe to introduce myself again, no? But it's a blessing. I'm really happy, you know, seeing what we're doing. Uh, the show is doing very well. Matters we are handling are good, relevant. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to come and uh, I really don't want to say like coming as an expert, but coming as a student. Yes. We say when you stop learning, then you start, you start dying. So once, once you stop being a student, you start dying. Wow. I hope you've heard that. When you stop learning, you start dying. So I don't know, you start with the brain or, but you start dying. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, Apostle, I think it is important for us to, to start maybe a simple from the foundations. What is leadership? Leadership is defined in different ways, and the people, different people define it in different ways. And there are many, many de definitions of leadership. But um, one of my very key uh, definitions that I value, and of course being um, leadership in a church side. I will borrow from one man called the Black Abbey who says leadership is taking people towards God's, God's agenda. Mm -hmm. So it is leadership if you are taking people towards God's agenda. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing I would say leadership is leadership really um, has been defined by many other people. Le leadership is courage. Mm -hmm. Um, and you cannot lead without having the courage to lead the people. Yes. Because again, the people you are leading are not uh, just uh, clapping for you. Yes. You need courage to tell people this is the way. Mm -hmm. Now, to lead again is to know the way and to show it. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot lead if you don't know where you are taking people. Mm -hmm. You must know the way and then take the people to that way. Mm -hmm. So there are so many other definitions. But I think with that we can uh, really say we have the engine has started uh, running. Yes, uh, and uh, I, I am hoping that this plane will go so far uh, because uh, the engine is in a groomer, the sound is good. Okay. 
yeah. So our main agenda of having this topic is to juxtapose the church, not specific denominations, but the church as a body of Christ and leadership and especially leadership pertaining to the governance of not only the country but also different sectors in the society. Previously we, we had a panel and one of the panelists said that um, leadership and politics, they cannot be separated, they are inseparable. And this is what he said. He said that politics are the basic matters of the society and the community. So there is the stratification where there is the higher class, there is the middle class, and there is the lower class. When there is leadership in whichever area and sector of the community and society, be it in church, be it in a company, be it in school, be it even in the family, there must be politics. How do we reconcile this, especially now that we are in an electioneering period and there is a role that the church needs to play? What do you feel is the role of the church? Well, I think those are too many things together which uh, we need to, you know, separate. Yes. When uh, somebody talks about leadership and the politics, mm -hmm. there are leaders who are in politics and there are politicians who are in leadership. They mix. Mm -hmm. However, you know, a politician may, may not just be a leader because he is a leader. You can ask for votes and uh, you are given and you lead. The issue is what type of leadership will you be giving? Mm -hmm. There are so many types of leadership. You can have uh, strategic leadership. Mm -hmm. so when we are looking at that leader, is he strategic, for example? By the way, dictatorship is also part of leadership. <laughs> yeah, and um, somebody can be a dictator leading people. Yes. Now, when we come to spiritual leadership, mm -hmm. that is where now we have a problem. Because, for example, we may have a, like a pastor who may not ask for votes to be a leader. Where somebody comes and says, the Lord called me to lead these people. Moses was not voted for. And that is also another type of leadership, which is theocratic leadership. Where it is God who appointed you and God gave you work to do. Yes. Now, again, there are people who argue that uh, even leadership, we vote and we bring them to God and God sanitizes them and uses them. Yes. All these are issues that people argue around. But um, let me come back to politics, and now this is a electioneering period, mm -hmm. and you are asking, what should the church do? Mm -hmm. The church should give direction on who do we call a leader, and uh, what are the qualities for this leadership. Mm -hmm. For example, we expect somebody to be a man of integrity. Mm -hmm. If we are helping people to choose, tell them, Look for a man or a woman who has integrity. Number two, we will tell that people, look for a person who has some values. For example, a person who values things like moral values. We don't want anybody who just go there and uh, say we, uh, people are arguing about a portion and somebody says, I don't care. Um, as long as this thing has no eyes, you can remove it. I don't care uh, as long as, um, you know, we want somebody who has values, moral values. Mm -hmm. What is your stand when it comes to issues like, uh, for example, um, youth and uh, uh, sexuality? You know, what is your stand? Do you say whatever you want to do is your life? We want somebody who can bring some dignity, some some values in the society. Remember, the morals of a society determines the lifespan of a of a, of a society. Mm -hmm. There are people who argue, oh. Um, if we get money in this country, mm -hmm. the country will do well. Mm -hmm. And I will say, no, we can have money and destroy our country. Actually, money can destroy a country. Yes. So we need other values, not just money. Now, Kenya, when I hear politics, they say, oh, vote for me, I'll bring money there. Vote for me, I'll not uh, spend your money. But we, we, we need to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. you are telling us we vote for you so that you can help us with our own money. Mm -hmm. We need to see what have you done with the money that is yours. Yeah, before you tell us what to do with our own money, mm -hmm. tell us what you have done with your own money. Yes. What have you done? And mm -hmm. these are the records that we need to check. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm glad you've been able to take through, uh, us in this direction because um, there was a bit of uh, debate and let's say response in that there is a feeling that the church may not have been able previously 
let's say to to bring the society to a place where you you can now give leaders who are able to stand on a moral ground and the the church can applaud uh, with confidence that these leaders have stemmed from us we have come as a church to to help the society understand that these are the kind of leaders that we would want to see do you think that is the case no i i, I actually think the the church has been uh, judged too harshly mm -hmm. because i know very many of these leaders are from church mm -hmm. and when you look at the, what the church has done church has done a lot mm -hmm. we have schools that have been built by churches mm -hmm. and that is where they went to school mm -hmm. would you still say you went to school but the church did nothing mm -hmm. yet went through that school mm -hmm. i know churches have uh, helped so many paid school fees for many children mm -hmm. including us we know we are paid for many mm -hmm. now that is also helping them Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is we also need to understand that church does not have a national curriculum for leadership mm -hmm. where we say now for you to be leaders, come to our church, we teach you. Mm -hmm. so that is what we, we need to ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when people are judging us, mm -hmm. you cannot set an exam and then do a, a marking scheme mm -hmm. and mark it and tell us you have failed. Mm -hmm. You need to have told us this is what you'll be testing from. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be checking the church involvement in these matters. The issue is, do the people want to listen to a church? Mm -hmm. And again, you said, when we come up, we talk about church, what mm -hmm. is church? Church is not just a denomination. Yes. We, we can only go back to the, oh, the big church, mm -hmm. Ecclesia. Mm -hmm. And then ask yourself, is there anything the church is doing? Mm -hmm. Yes, the church is doing a lot. Mm -hmm. When you come to this church, I am here leading the church, and I'm here teaching values, and I'm here telling people this is how to do things. I'm telling people don't be corrupt. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, all the people who can gather here are not corrupt. Mm -hmm. We can have a few, just as you know that even in Jesus' uh, team, there was a Judas. Mm -hmm. But we are doing a lot. Mm -hmm. I hope you've heard. We are doing a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm not playing the devil's advocate, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm also a Christian. I'm part of this church. Uh, but what we desire is even to to clear up um, the people who are in doubt, especially the people who are part of this body of Christ, uh, to understand a couple of things, especially pertaining leadership and, and, and governance of the nation and even other sectors. Now, um, we know Paul in the book of Romans. Uh, he said that, we should be obedient to the government authorities because um, all authority is God given and so on and so forth down there all the way to around verse 5. When we juxtapose this verse to what we are seeing, there is almost a, an ironic um, imagery. Yeah? And in the book of Hosea, chapter, chapter 8, there is now where God is, is, is lamenting through Hosea that these people have chosen kings for themselves who I did not endorse. So how do we reconcile these two, especially in a, in a, in a democratic nation like this? Mm -hmm. I see you are trying to go around <laughs> uh, because pastors have been accused in politics and all that. Yes. That is where you are bringing Osea. Mm -hmm. And then governance, Romans 13, uh, Paul says that the, the government is instituted by the Lord, and so we must obey. Mm -hmm. Now, the same way the Bible says you children obey your parents. Mm -hmm. When the Bible says obey your parents, mm -hmm. that, that does not mean if your father comes with a gun and they say, go shoot these people, mm -hmm. you go and they shoot because you're obeying your father. Mm -hmm. Is that obedience? No. No, the Bible does not say, well, now that you're in government, take away your brain and they do everything the leaders say. You think that's what the Bible says? The Bible does not mean that we pu be pushed anywhere by any leader who says, I am a leader, and we obey blindly. We should be able to stand and say, no. Remember John the Baptist. He stood and told the, the herald that it is wrong for you to take someone's wife. That does not mean that when you are a leader, you should be clapping for Herod and taking someone's wife. No. We should, that does not mean that we should be clapping when people are make laws that are going to mess generations to come. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the issue of uh, pastors also, um, it's also important to understand that the way the government of that time worked, it was a kingdom. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Today we have a democratic government. Now, every king and a priest he listened to. Yes. The question is this. Are our government leaders willing to listen to the priest? Mm -hmm. if, if really you want to judge the priest as being corrupt, mm -hmm. are you willing to listen to us? Mm -hmm. We know Nathan was there with, um, King, David. with King David. Yes. And they see what happened. Mm -hmm. Nathan comes to him and he says, there is a story he gave somebody who had one sheep, who did this. And the king was there saying, whoever did this must die. Mm -hmm. And then he turns to him and says, um, that person, king, is you. Mm. And we see how David breaks down and comes down. Yes. Our leaders are not waiting to break down. Our leaders are waiting for prayer breakfast. They start there, they say, we forgive each other, forgive me. But the next time you hear, they're insulting each other. Mm. That is not the leaders we want to see. They were using God as a PR, a meetings like this as a PR. We need people when they leave the Bible and they say, I am going to protect the Constitution. We want to see that. Mm -hmm. But we cannot, you cannot be lifting the Bible, saying I'm going to abide by this and I'll protect the Constitution. You break it, then you tell us, you pastors, you need to listen to us as your leaders. Mm -hmm. We are not going to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and our work is not to celebrate our leaders. It's to tell them that is wrong. The other thing is, when one pastor does something wrong, they, we judge the whole church. Mm. Church is not one person. And of course, again, we judge them based on the light the, the, the media gives us. Mm -hmm. Again, media can be biased. Mm -hmm. We have had the, um, the deputy president complaining mm -hmm. that he is not given equal coverage because yeah, they can choose much. to propagate this uh, or the other. Mm -hmm. So if a media come and say, church is corrupt, that's mm -hmm. the song we want to run with it. Mm -hmm. It is not true. Mm -hmm. Church is not corrupt. Leaders are not. There mm -hmm. are pastors who have said no to that money, and they have not taken it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the people who come and they say, oh, you pastors, you are going to hell because you have taken money from uh, corrupt leaders, mm -hmm. are the same leaders who come back and give the same money. So what is the measure of yours is clean, and this is not clean. Why do you call someone corrupt and you're not prosecuting that person and you want us to say he is uh, corrupt? It is you who should be saying we have taken him to court because he is corrupt and now because he is in court, you should not take anything that comes from him. But you cannot be running around telling us, oh, this man is corrupt, but uh, you, you are clean and you are doing nothing. That is not the way you fight it. Our work is not to prosecute. And the fact that I've refused money does not mean that person is sanitized. Mm -hmm. It's for example, if I don't eat too much because people in another place are dying with anger, does that help the people there? No. It is unless I take the food I've not eaten and I take to those people. But refusing to eat too much because there are people who have no food, I'm not <laughs> helping myself and I'm not helping people. And that is what is happening with our leaders. Yeah. Wow. As I was doing this research, uh, I, I stumbled upon a certain clip from, from 2018. It was in one of the major media covering stations. Huh? And someone who's a bit controversial at this moment said a couple of things that caught my mind. He said that there are three levels of, of authority, or four. He says the first is in the family, then the second, the church, then the third, the, the government now. And we understand that um, out of the, the civic education that we get, the family authority is first also. The, the, the second is the church, then the, gov the, the government. Now, the government is an agent of the state. The state is everyone, as, as we understand. So, um, who spearheads what? Meaning, who is the one who begins now, for example, the process of prosecuting a couple of people. Is it the government itself or is it the state? When we look at the state, the state, it is everyone encompassed. Let me first say this. Mm -hmm. State and government. Mm -hmm. Who is the state? It's everybody. Yes. Governance is where we say we entrust you, we take our powers and give best them on you mm -hmm. to lead us. Yes. So what you say, we obey because we gave you powers. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. It's just like two drivers. You are driver, my driver. Mm -hmm. 
if we keep on driving, we are going to mess the car. The car. So we say, okay, I'm a driver, so I share off my driving, you drive. Mm -hmm. So that this car can go somewhere. Mm -hmm. But if we hold the stair wheel, the two of us, the fact that we're on that stair wheel does not mean that I'm poor. Mm -hmm. No, it's only that the chance us, we have one chance, and the stair wheel is one. Mm -hmm. And so I share off my leadership and say, you drive. So when these people are governing and leading us, they must know that we who have given you power are not uh, foolish. We know how it should be done. Mm -hmm. It's only that we have given you our vote mm -hmm. to lead us. Mm -hmm. We must have that in our mind. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to now. Where do we start? Mm -hmm. Leadership. I don't know whether you meant governance or leadership, but let's look at it from the two sides. Yes. It should start from the family. Mm -hmm. To me, that's why any politician, any leader who does not respect family unit should not be voted. Mm -hmm. Because when you mess the family, you mess everything. Mm -hmm. Actually, the ones of, um, uh, I don't know whether it were, were his ones or, or just uh, born from somewhere, but he sang that song, Miles Monroe, the late. He said, if you want a brand new nation, you need a brand new church. Mm -hmm. If you want a brand new church, you need a brand new family. Mm -hmm. If you need a brand new family, you need brand new source. Two mm -hmm. people come to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if you need brand new source, then you better come to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You see the way he has put it? Yes. Now, you come to the family, mm -hmm. two people, yes. a husband and a wife, they give birth to a child, they start raising that child. Yes. Then this child, we are raising this child for ourselves and for the state. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't decide to kill your child. Yes. Because in as much as you are a house, I mean a child, you are also raising that child for God and for the state. Yes. This child you are raising, it is in the family setup. You teach them morals. Mm -hmm. Do not steal. Mm -hmm. Don't take one that is not anything that is not yours. Mm -hmm. And it is at that family level we start seeing some behaviors and they correct them. For example, if you send your child to school with one pencil and he comes back with the two pencils, you need to find out where did you get the pencil from? Mm. Because it is not you bought. Don't celebrate. Mm. If you sent your child to school and this child came with an extra lunchbox, you need to ask, how come you have two? Mm. And they will wait it. Mm. Because you could be raising a bully who goes, takes uh, food from other children and they eat. Are you getting that? Yes. It is in the family setup where we tell children, once you have eaten, take your plate and they clean it or take it the sink. Don't leave it here. Mm -hmm. Now, the children who are not brought up like that, they cannot be leaders in higher levels. Mm -hmm. Because they keep thinking that serving people, that is servanthood we are teaching, mm -hmm. by the way. Yes. It is also in this family where we say, today, take all the plates and they clean. That is not slavery. Mm -hmm. It is in this family where we tell children, we'll take the plate for other people to the sink. Slowly. It is in the family where you come with one banana and you have three children and tell them to share. What are you telling them? That you may not have enough for yourself. The little you have, learn to share. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, after that, you go to church. When you are going to church, you tell this child, carry an offering. Now, today we are fighting people who you should not be giving. But let me tell you, it is in church where we teach them to give. Yes. Where else do we teach children to give? You carry an offering, go give. We tell them when your trouser is short, you can bless someone else. And not just because it's short, just because you can also share with another who doesn't have. Yes. Sharing is taught in the family, then we take it to the church. In the church, we teach them that now in another level, that you can actually give it and let it go. Mm -hmm. That's why we give to God yes. and let it go. You cannot sacrifice an animal and have it at the same time. You burn it to see that it has gone. You cannot have your cake and eat yes, it. You know? <laughs> so when you sacrifice, you burn it, you see it vanish into ashes. Mm -hmm. And you, you go knowing God has received. Mm -hmm. But you have not seen God come to eat. That is faith. Mm -hmm. We start building faith in a God that you may not see, but you know he is there. Yes. That is how we do it. Mm -hmm. Now, when the state fights the church, it has destroyed it itself. Actually, the state should be helping the church in many ways. It is in church where we teach people how to marry, 
how to keep your family, mm. how to keep your children. Government has to do that, really. The church should be able to do that. The, the, I see the state trying to marry people and all that. But you know, they will never do counseling for you. Mm. They will not help you. They will not just call you and say, you are 18, yes. If they check, uh, you have ID, yes. Then they marry you. What happens after that? Marriage is not just about being a, at the age of majority. It's more than that. Mm. Keeping a marriage is not just being 18 and above. There is more than that. Yes. And that is what state will never do. And that is where now we find the government or the state and uh, the church marry. So um, what, I'm, what I'm getting from this uh, is that with, when, when taking the, the, the three authorities, uh, that is the, the family, the church, and then the civilians now giving the authority now to the government, the civilians and the state, it's, it's almost like a cycle of life huh? in that the family brings up children now for the church to train. Then these children become the state. Then the state elects some of themselves into government. And now the government helps facilitate the smooth rotation of this. Yes, actually, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. If we got it right from the family level, mm. it will be okay in the church level. Yes. And in the government, it will be okay. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. if the family level is okay, for example, you train your children, mm. don't touch someone's property. If you park your car there and they find the children writing, that tells you that children have not been taught. Mm. But if you teach them from the word go, respect someone's property, don't take what is not yours. If you pick someone's uh, money, it is not yours. Ask, find out who the owner is. That means at the church level, we will not have to put all these cameras to see who stole, who picked the bag and all that. Because people are helped. Yes. However, because church is like a, is like a garage where yes. we make those who are not made in the family level. We still come to that level and they help them. If a church gets it right, mm -hmm. guess what? We will not need jails. Mm -hmm. We will have less policemen. Yes. Because why, why do we need 10 policemen uh, to help us in uh, keeping, managing something we couldn't handle? Yes. Like exams, for example. Why do we need a policeman to man a, a, an exam center? From who? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why we have poli five policemen guarding exams from being stolen? Who is coming to steal the election? Why? It means the values were wrong from the beginning. Yes. A child must be taught from the beginning that this exam, come, do the exam, you pass or you fail. It is your labor that is being rewarded in a certain way, mm. period. Yes. And we will not have a parent buying an exam. What kind of children will we raise? Mm. Can you imagine a surgeon who went to school and the father bribed his wear, and then you go there, present your body to this surgeon <laughs> to operate on you. And then he leaves scalpels inside and your body. And leaves inside because that is what was paid. Yes. Can you imagine a policeman who never qualified, you know, the stature and everything they look for. Then he goes there, maybe his eyes are not seeing properly and he is given a gun. And he is supposed to shoot an enemy who is in another distance. Just because they, didn't, they were paid to negate, you know, to overlook yes. the eyesight. Yes. This is a simple thing that we compromise mm -hmm. and we get it wrong. Which is, uh, which is, which is very sad. And um, I'm liking the way this airplane is going. Huh? There's something very puzzling, Apostle. The panelists who were here previously, one of them said that the youths are lazy. And the debate was, are the youths lazy? What I've started with is a reason that most of them give that that's why the youths are not going to vote. One of them said, no, the youths are just lazy. What do you think, Apostle? Are the youths lazy or do they have legitimate reasons as to why they are not going to the ballot box, uh, the ballot poll? Before I go there, I would want to tell the youth, you will not be youth forever. Now, today you may be doing that because you feel you are youth. But remember, if you are 20 years now, this election will be gone by the time the president is sworn in, another one comes with 25 years yes. old. Let me also come to the issue of uh, the youth raising. I think 
what we are lacking is the government is not doing enough to to give a playing ground for our youth to work however um i would want every youth to think personally stop being lied to think about the small business you can do even if you are selling charcoal or selling maize do it for yourself as you think of what else